Okay, everyone. Um, I'm glad to see here uh, so many people and uh, familiar faces as well. Um, so um, I guess most of you came to understand what's going on with Guido, uh, but I'll be talking on uh, Python 3.8, uh, the new stuff in it, obviously the assignment expression, and uh, let's start. Uh, first, uh, for those who don't know me, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm involved in uh, educational projects for diversity population. These are Arabs and uh, extreme religious people, Haredim in Hebrew, uh, and uh, integrating them into uh, the high-tech uh, companies and software industry. So, uh, and I've been doing Python like over 20 years and very active within the community. So, um, <coughs> the uh, 3.8 is going to be released on uh, September. Uh, that's the release candidate. Uh, we, if, if you want, you can still use the alpha. And I think uh, soon uh, the beta would be released. It should have been released on end of May. Uh, it wasn't yet. Possibly today or yesterday, I didn't check it. Uh, but there are new features uh, which are interesting and uh, I think uh, you would like to, to see them. So um, let's uh, move on. Uh, PEP 572, uh, who was here in uh, yesterday's uh, presentation by Tal? Okay, uh, so uh, most people. And uh, you heard the story about this uh, famous or infamous uh, a PEP uh, with assignment expression uh, that uh, was interesting. So what it's all about? Spoiler, it's very simple. Uh, the ability uh, to have some expression and assign it to a variable and still use this variable next on because we assign and continue using the assignment as expressions. So, why, why do we need it? What's the rationale behind it? Uh, first, it's more readable in some cases, and I'll show some examples soon. Uh, very simple, uh, we can see this and uh, understand the code easier. Uh, this is uh, something that we already have in assignment statements. We can have two or three variables assigned at the same time to the same value. So this is basically uh, the normal assignment we have. Uh, this enables us to reuse sub-expression or some calculation, and it has advantages when we debug code. Uh, sometimes in debugging, we have to break down expressions and refactor the code so we can see some part of it and debug it and understand its value because it's very compli complicated to understand the entire calculation. So um, these are all uh, advantages, and the PEP says, uh, was discussed how to do that. Let's see some examples. So first example uh, you can see is uh, some bad smell. Uh, I guess most people can see that we calculate the match twice. Um, this might be expensive or not expensive, but this is a pattern going on. And uh, most examples are from the PEP itself. And uh, you can see some of the examples I'll show are actually from the uh, Python library. So uh, in this case, uh, we have uh, uh, the, the same calculation done twice. One, to understand whether there is a match, and the other, once there is a match, uh, to use it. And uh, re using the code should have been like this. And somehow some people do it and some people don't. And maybe they don't care because they think uh, there's a very little cost associated with the calculation of a match. That might be the case in some uh, cases, but not necessarily in all cases. So um, let's see what... Uh, assignment expression would do, you can see here that uh, we can use the match in the if clause, take the result, and use it to calculate, uh, to take the first group. So uh, basically we calculate something, take, take its result. And you can also see the syntax, which is colon equals, which is different than uh, the usual uh, equals we use in assignment statements. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, we, another uh, example is that we can add uh, uh, at the search in an if clause and use it later on in another statement. So the first one uh, above is using it within the same uh, statement or expression. And the second one says, okay, I have here some uh, if uh, statement. In it, I get some of the results of the expression. I save them in a variable and I reuse this variable later on. Instead of, let's say, uh, doing the calculation first, using the variable in the if statement and later on using it. So it does simplify the code and the idea was 
to have uh, something which is very, well, very easy to understand. I guess uh, this uh, uh, comes familiar for people coming from uh, languages like C and C++. Uh, the uh, usage of uh, the result uh, of some expression in a loop and then moving on and processing the same data only when it's valid. If it's not valid, you, we use the same value to exit the loop. So this can now be done uh, in a similar way in Python. Also in uh, compilations, uh, we can use them uh, to uh, take the value and use it again and again uh, inside the compilation, which again simplifies the code. Um, I don't know if you're aware, there are a lot of advantages for readability and performance to use compilations. So this is again a way to do that, either in the if clause of the compilation or directly as one of the values. So now I move to some examples from uh, the Python standard library. Uh, you can see uh, in a file called uh, site.py, an example where a code could be simplified, still very readable, still very easy to understand, using uh, um, the assignment expression instead of uh, the usual uh, way to do the stuff, we're using a variable and then rechecking it. So we do that combined and still the code is very readable. Another one from Pi Decimal. Uh, again, uh, you can see uh, something which is kind of long to read and shift to the right because we have an if and then another if. Uh, and this can be done in a single uh, liner. Again, without losing readability. The, the idea is not to make stuff shorter or just easier to understand. It's, again, the idea is to make it more readable, more easy to understand. So uh, that's another example. You can see here the result of it, uh, very simply done. Uh, it's very easy to read. And another from daytime. Uh, again, you can see it, uh, the variable is, uh, used to be an if, and, done, and now it's a very simple uh, addition statement. Last example for those who fork, uh, there's a simple way to do that. Uh, yeah, Tim Peters, uh, I guess most people know, one of the core developers, uh, did have a look inside, and uh, you can see uh, in examples, he made a lot of examples. Uh, he said he showed some cases where using assignment expressions would be weird or inappropriate, but he showed a lot of cases where it makes a lot of sense and simplifies code. Uh, this is one of the examples where there's a code that you need to read, and uh, if, and if, and if. And you can see that actually, uh, when you read this statement, you understand what's going on, and you understand what is returned. So basically, uh, this has been accepted uh, by uh, Guido. And uh, uh, after accepting, uh, it seemed uh, very, uh, that there came a few issues. First of all, uh, I guess everybody know what BDFL is, and uh, Guido, <coughs> made the, uh, uh, this, uh, there was a furor, and a lot of, um, I would say, emotional responses uh, in the community, some of which uh, Tal described yesterday. And um, eventually, it made uh, Guido to step down from BDFL uh, with this uh, famous transfer of power email. <clears throat> uh, there was, the question, uh, stuff that happened that uh, uh, people were asking, is he making the right choices specifically here? Because there were a lot of opinionated people who thought things should be different or whether or not this feature should be included at all in the languages. Um, so basically, this is uh, the acceptance email uh, he, said, uh, he sent. He let a very short time for responses. He literally had to ask people, to let him get, get more time to respond because of the amount of emails and stuff that was happening on. And uh, that's the letter, I think Tal also showed it yesterday, uh, the transfer of power where he says, okay, I'm stepping down, uh, this is it. I think it's time for the community to take the decisions. I don't want to be the one where uh, all the uh, disagreements uh, go to and people who don't agree feel like I'm doing the right thing and uh, don't like my decisions. I think we are now very big as a community and we can 
take it to the next step. And again, as Tal described, there's a steering council. Uh, for the lack of time, I won't uh, uh, go into the details, but these are the five people elected for the uh, steering council. Okay, I'm moving on to the next features of, uh, the, uh, of the version 3.8. Um, as I said, this was uh, the major one, but uh, this uh, equal specifier for f-strings, uh, I hope everyone is, uh, is uh, familiar with f-strings, uh, because they make our life easier and uh, easy to understand. And as you can see, uh, for debug purposes on maybe other cases, uh, there is a very nice way to uh, look at variables. Um, so uh, you can have something uh, like x equals, and uh, this means the, for the f-strings to include x, the string x equals, and the value of x, uh, which is stuff we do a lot in, uh, if we debug using printing, then we use this kind of stuff, and this uh, simplifies our task, uh, putting expressions or whatever we like, and an equal at the end, and get the, the result. Another uh, you know, change is uh, an addition, uh, a change in the way we define functions. Uh, there's a new delimiter, which is the slash. Uh, you can see it here. And the slash uh, gives us uh, the ability to have positional only parameters, which means we cannot use keywords uh, uh, to describe them. Um, for example, uh, in this case, uh, there's a function, and you can only transfer numbers. You cannot transfer like uh, keyword arguments to it. You have to transfer only numbers. Uh, there are uh, a, f a few uh, use cases for this, and uh, those who want go are welcome to look at uh, PEP 570, which describes these features and uh, everything related to it. The new uh, formal way to do functions is now uh, using uh, first the positional only parameters, then the slash. These are obviously uh, optional. You don't have to do that. You can skip them. But if you do, you have to put them first. Then positional or keyword parameters, which is the normal way we do in Python. And after the uh, second delimiter, the asterisk, we can have the keyword only parameters, which mean we must use keywords to be able to transfer uh, parameters there. Okay, so uh, a few more uh, stuff which is new, but it's only for people who are really uh, into the details. One of them is the ability to change the location of the cache files. Uh, as you know, today it's uh, within the same folder from which we run the code, or we have the code, and now we have the ability to change this location. Don't go into the details, uh, there's a clear uh, discussion and details uh, in the documents, but the idea is we don't necessarily want to have, uh, by the way, that's the way it's uh, defined. We don't have to do this uh, in, the, in the current directory. It can be anywhere else. OK. I don't know if, does anybody here know what ABI is? Anyone? Whoa. OK, a few. Uh, so uh, uh, the good news is that uh, now release and debug use the same ABI, which means they have the same interface. And uh, you can uh, use them uh, in, in, in together. So uh, you can describe. And the only incompatibility that was before them, uh, uh, before we union them, is fixed. So now, uh, it, uh, in order to do it, you can see here the difference for those who understand. Uh, if we want, you can come to me later. For lack of time, I can't really go into these details. Another important. Uh, uh, feature is the uh, initialization configuration. Uh, Python would start even faster. And uh, there is a new uh, C API and a final control of stuff, which means that stuff can be done and implemented better. Uh, in the last uh, maybe uh, two minutes, I'll just uh, mention a few of the stuff uh, that I find very useful in previous versions. Um, I guess uh, uh, some of you are familiar, uh, well, obviously uh, the data classes, which were from 3.7, uh, the f-strings, which I mentioned earlier, had a sig uh, some improvement here, uh, type ints, uh, for those who want their functions to be more documented and typed and enable the IDE to, to assist in identifying issues and bugs, uh, the coroutines and the whole async 
uh, I/O and the ability to run stuff concurrently. Uh, matrix multiplication using the uh, uh, the Strudel uh, uh, sign. Uh, Passlib, you are uh, working with files, enumerations, and one thing I really like in Python is the, the language is changing, it's moving, it's becoming more friendly, even more than it was before. It already was very friendly, but I think the ability to move on and do stuff that enables us better life is amazing. Uh, last one is enumerations. Okay, any questions? Uh, the question was, uh, what's the scope for assignment expressions? Uh, the answer is, uh, you can always close them in parentheses, and then you have exact scoping. Uh, the, 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 there are minor uh, issues related to the scoping uh, because of uh, the way it's implemented. But basically, first, the assignment expression, the part that you look into, you can close that in parentheses, and then you, are, you verify which part is going into the assignment. Otherwise, if you do an assignment in an if statement and then end something, it might be that the end is part of the expression that is assigned. That's one point. The other point is the other way around, where we can use this kind of uh, uh, variable. So we entered a new variable, let's say the match that I showed before, and this match has a scope, which is like the, uh, it was defined in the statement before, uh, the uh, um, uh, place where the expression is. Obviously, within the same statement, you can only use it in a place which is logical, and obviously here it's kind of very native to understand. Uh, if you have an if clause in a compression, you, have, uh, you cannot use in the if clause something which is created in the compression uh, result, okay? Okay, everyone, thank you very much.